Go ahead, Kathy. Okay, we ready? All right, welcome everyone. We're so excited to have you here tonight. We do this every Tuesday night, eight o'clock, same drill, but we invite you to come back, join us. We change up the topic every week. We have a lot of fun, a lot of community hangout, and of course, some really great information. So we're excited to have you here. Tonight's topic is all about the CBD. I'm real excited about sharing um, with all of you what I have learned over the last couple of years about CBD and the, more importantly, Young Living and Nature Ultra, um, when they combine and come out with their CBD in actually uh, July of 2019. Now, here's the thing. I am not a medical doctor. I'm not here to provide any medical claims or advice to you for using CBD, adding it to your regimen. So I would encourage you to talk with your physician if you have any concerns. I'm just here to share with you all about the goodness that I've enjoyed with them and a little bit of debunking some of those um, ideas that people have out there about CBD. So let's get started. I am going to actually pop up here and share a screen here and get that started. All right, there we go. All right, so welcome everyone. Again, I'm so excited to have you here and we're just gonna dive right in. Um, tonight, we are talking all about CBD and what is CBD. I cannot tell you how many people that I talk to, and it's just the stigma because, you know, we, it was uh, illegal and people don't know, and they associate it with marijuana because there's so much confusion that people think that when you say CBD, you are actually talking about marijuana. And so we're going to break that down a little bit because, um, CBD is not marijuana. They are of the same plant family, a cannabis family, but they're not the same thing. Uh, again, people will say it isn't CBD marijuana, but they're just taking what makes you high out of it. <laughs> so that's really one of the big misconceptions as well. But guys, marijuana and CBD are two totally chemical compounds of the same plant family. So let's talk about that where we can probably break it down where it makes a little bit more sense. So everybody knows what a daisy is, right? It's a plant, it's a flower. But did you know that there is 32,000 variations of a daisy? There's probably flowers or, or that we have passed by that we don't recognize as a daisy that is an actual daisy because it's in that same family. But it's different, it looks different, it smells different, it's shaped different because the chemical compounds of that flower is different than the next one to it. But it's still in the family. Another way to think about this is when we have pasta. If I have elbow pasta and I have maybe a whole brain penne pasta, they're pasta, both of them are of the pasta family, but they're two different textures, two different shapes, two different chemical compounds. They're not the same. They really don't even taste the same, right? So marijuana is the part of a hemp plant. It is a cannabis plant, but the primary com compound and chemical makeup, just like everything else, there's female and male and almost everything that, that is chemically made up. And so the hemp plant that produces marijuana the, or the plant that is marijuana is predominantly female. There's very, there's no male in it at all, actually. And the resin that it produces is, so, is such a really thick resin is what we call THC. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit more in depth in just a few minutes. But that is THC. And THC is what is that marijuana and what we know as is to cause that high feeling. CBD, which is cannabidiol comes from a cannabis plant, just like marijuana, but it's actually the re reverse of what the marijuana plant is. It is predominantly male with a, just, a, just a little scant of a female in it. So it has just a pinch of THC in it at that stage. So one has a lot of THC, one has less than 3% in it. All right, so let's talk about the history because I want to debunk this idea. We, 
we have been brought up to think, um, you know, it's bad because they had to legalize it. So we automatically think that, oh my gosh, I don't want to get high. If it was a controlled substance, it must be something bad about it. But y'all, the reality of it is, is CBD was brought into the U.S. in the 16th century. And actually at that time, farmers were required to grow a certain percentage on their farms. They had to manufacture the hemp because they used it to, to create rope they put it in their foods they um you know that it was they made paper out of it part of their shoes were, were made from the hemp so they were required to make it and then around the 1920s um it became very political there was this media war going on and so uh, politics kind of got in there and they went in and these policy maker, makers made it against the law to, to um, plant it, sell it, crop it, the whole nine yards. You could not distribute hemp in any way, shape or form. All right, so we're gonna fast forward to 2018 and a pharmaceutical company um, was doing some testing and they created a medicine called Epidiolex and one of the main components of Epidiolex was CBD. Little problem with this though, they could not manufacture it and sell it because of the 1920s law. But the cool thing about Epidiolex and the CBD, which was the main component in there, is the positive reaction that it was having with someone that had seizures. And so they were like, we've got to get this proof because there was such really great research and information um, from the CBD and someone with seizure activity. So they went in, they went and lobbied, and they got some politicians to go in, and they downgraded it from a Schedule One to a Schedule V controlled substance um, through the FDA regulations. Well, right behind that is when we had the Hemp Farm um, Act of 2018. And it was signed that as long as it had less than 3% of THC, it was no longer considered a controlled substance and it was no longer illegal to um, sell it in the United States. So I say that because, you know, um, there's this stigma with it because people think that um, especially with marijuana in the last few years, they think that CBD really was this illegal substance all this time. And actually it goes back to the 16th century and it really was not created to be illegal because of some kind of bad um, meta, uh, response that the body had or alterations that, that this CBD had on the body. So I want people to know that it's, it doesn't have that effect on you. So let's talk about why, how it does affect the system. So the endocannabinoid system, I'm gonna to refer to that as the EC system from here on out because I will totally butcher that if I say it all the way through. <laughs> and it's called the EC system. And guess what? We all have that in our bodies, right? We naturally have that. It is our central nervous system and our peripheral nervous system. So the EC system controls our body. They are CB1 and CB2 receptors and they talk to each other. The central nervous system is your brain and your spine. That's our CB1. And your CB2 is primarily your peripheral nervous system. It's all over your body. And it is your immune system, your digestion, all of the things are controlled in that CB2 receptor. Now, there's other little receptors, but the CB1 and CB2 is your primary receptors. And um, I could go off on a lot of those, but these are the two main ones in your body that control everything. And they talk to one another. So like, for instance, if you go outside, the, I mean, the whole goal is to bring our body to homeostasis. That's what's the job of these two receptors or your EC system, right? And so we go outside and we get really hot and they're talking to one another. And when your temperature rises, that means your body is out of balance. And all of a sudden you start sweating profusely. That means that it's signaling each other to say, uh-uh, we are too, our temperature is too high. We need to come down. So it makes your body start to sweat and it brings it down to homeostasis. Same thing if you go outside and it's really cold and you don't have your jacket, they're like, oh gosh, the body temp is too low. So it needs to bring it. So it's going to make your body shiver. That's the signal. They're talking to one another for you to go put a jacket on, get some heat and warm the body up. 
uh, or if you're you haven't eaten and all of a sudden your your body needs nourishment it's going to make the stomach growl. That is your signal to go get something to eat to bring it into homeostasis and balance. So we are constantly talking to each other all day. Our receptors are constantly talking with each other um, all day long to help bring it into balance. So let's go back and talk about THC versus CBD. We talked about the THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, is what is the psychoactive compound in marijuana. And remember, marijuana primarily is a female um, chemical compound, if you will, has no male in it. And it, pr pr it makes this, um, produces this really thick, thick resin called THC, the tetrahydrocannabinol. So it makes THC and that THC is what is our psychoactive compound that makes it crosses into our CB1 receptor. So it binds to your CB1 and makes you feel high. That's why when someone has used marijuana, they have that altering effect. But with CBD, that is not possible to do that, guys. It doesn't have THC in it. It, it remember it, the plant in its natural form has scant amounts of female in there. So it's less than, it's going to have just a small percentage anyway. And then once it is uh, processed, if it's processed properly, there should be none in there at all. But even with four, it's removed. It's very, very little. And it does not have the capability to bring into CB1 and CB2 receptors. Now, it does bind, but it what happens is it all, it basically goes to a different type of receptor, and that initiates the CB1 and CB2. And it's pretty cool how they talk to each other. Um, and it and it basically is a G protein that it gets in there, and that has the ability to actually change the receptor and activate cell memory in there. And when that happens, it's basically like shooting in an, e in an email to it. So it's pretty, it's pretty incredible how these receptors talk to one another. And this is in our own natural body. So when CBD gets in there and the body is not balanced for whatever reason, something's going on in the body um, and, it, and those receptors can't bring it to balance, then CBD plays a huge role of getting in there and being able to push that and get that communication in there to change that cell into bringing it to balance. So it really works hand in hand, just like our essential oils work hand in hand with our body. So does CBD. It comes from a plant birth. Version. So let's talk a little bit about the process of it, because I mentioned a little bit, just like our essential oils process, it is very important that you know where you are getting your CBD. So CBD is uh, processed, if it's processed properly, we'll use a CO2 extraction. And when it goes through a CO2 extraction, it's extreme high temps, they change it up through and through. And y'all, it takes about six hours to process about 20 pounds of that plant. But if it's done properly, and that's why CO2 extraction is, is more expensive, um, they're going through all the hoops to do it, but this is the only sure way to get a pure CBD, has absolutely no THC in it, but it also removes anything else that might be in it, including terpenes, which we're going to talk about in a minute, and you've heard that word if you're an essential oil user, and we all know what, that's the good in it, but unfortunately, when they're removing THC and all the things, it removes everything out of there. So why is that important? Because when you plant hemp, here's the cool thing. When we plant anything, we know how important to have um, dirt that's more organic, doesn't have any kind of processed, um, you know, pesticides, any kind of fertilizers in the ground, things like that. But with hemp, it's more important than anything else because hemp is like a sponge. Anything that's been in that dirt that is staying dormant in that dirt is now in that hemp plant. It will soak every single bit of it up, everything. So when they have the hemp plant for Young Living launched uh, in 2019, they partnered with Nature's Ultra and launched the CBD under the Young Living um, name. So they are partners. And 
when they decided to partner up with Young Living, they had to go through rigorous testing and things like that. So the terpenes, when they take all of this um, out of there, uh, the terpenes, of course, is the good stuff. So now they decided to put the terpenes back in. They connected with Young Living and the terpenes is a part of helping it go to that magnified support to your body. A lot of people ask me, well, what's the difference between just taking an oil? Well, the oils are definitely going to support, but they support in one way. They're great here. But when you put the two together, it's like a powerhouse that you can't break. Okay. So full spectrum, full spectrum CBD, we hear that a lot, is no more than it's just got everything in it. It's got CBD in it, but it also has THC in it. And a CBD isolate, which is what Young Living provides for you, means it has gone through that CO2 extraction. They've taken all of that out of there, um, and therefore it loses what they call the entourage effect. What they've created is smart spectrum by putting essential oils back in there, creatively choosing essential oils. They've put it back in there. And it's kind of like uh, the entourage effect is not the high. I'm talking about the effect on your body physically and what it does to support your body physically. So the entourage effect is nothing more than this. If you have an excellent quarterback, he can be perfect and he can throw the ball and he is absolutely um, fantastic. But when you put that great team with him, together they create the entourage effect together they're unstoppable and it just takes it to the next level well your essential oils combined with pure quality cbd is exactly what happens and adding those terpenes in there is what gives it that so terpenes we know from essential oils um, support us with, you know, inflammation in the body, um, mood swings, anxiety, nausea, all of those things, it helps you. But nobody wants to um, take a CBD. And recently, I mean, this was very recent, they did a um, survey and they tested all these random CBDs, because guys, you can go online and there are these advertisements that say, do you want to sell uh, hemp and CBD? It's private labeled CBD. And for a little of nothing, you can have your own hemp oil with your name. Those are popping up everywhere. I know you've seen them for like $20. The scary thing with that, just like with essential oils, you need to know the company and what's coming from that. Because when they tested random one of those, they found metals. They found leads, they found solvents in there. Why? Because they're not using organic soil and farming practices. That's number one. But two, it's very expensive uh, to do the CO2 extraction and to do it the right way. So they use chemical solvents to do that. And if you see water soluble on a label, run from it. It's no good, it's poor quality. So Young Living, when they partnered with um, Nature's Ultra, we don't have to worry about that because they're U.S. certified organic. They're non-GMO. They have to go by the seed to seal certification. So they're tested and approved. They go through lengthy testing, um, high quality CBD. And they actually go one step further, which doesn't shock me because Young Living always goes the extra mile, right? So with Nature's Ultra, remember when I said the hemp plant is like a, a, a huge sponge. Uh, anytime you plant something, it will absorb some of that. But the hemp plant will absorb all of that. And it basically clears the dirt up for you. It over time will actually make your dirt more organic because it takes all of it out if you keep putting it in there. So what Nature's Ultra does is when they test the land and it's all organic, but they go in and crop that out. And while that land is laying dormant for the next crop, they actually go in there and sporadically plant hemp that is not to be cropped for processing, just to ensure that nothing gets in there while it lays dormant. So that if it were to do that, it, it pulls it all up into that hemp, then they dispose of that hemp plant test it again, and then they plant the next farm and field for it. So I thought that was pretty, um, pretty amazing. So let's talk a little bit about safety and usage because everybody gets kind of, you know, is it okay to take it? Um, 
again, I'm not, uh, you know, a physician and I can't give you medical advice, but as far as safety, I can tell you there's not any type of um, uh, anyone that has overdosed on CBD or any kind of negative responses off of taking CBD, on the, it's all been uh, very positive feedback. And the only thing that I have found, they caution someone that if they have liver disease or a liver condition to consult with your physician. The reason that they did that is because about a year and a half ago, a couple years ago, there was a lab that did testing on mice and they gave them extreme amounts in one setting, which caused their liver enzymes to elevate. And so they put that out. And so there was this big battle between physicians and in medical journals about how that was just um, very poor testing um, and that it was um, poor uh, reporting on that because it was actually, no one is going to sit there and take that much um, CBD at one time. The reason that is important is it does process in the liver. It does break down in the liver, just like Tylenol. Tylenol is known to put a little strain on the liver. And so if you take a lot of Tylenol at one time, that is very hard on the liver. So with anything, supplements or anything like that, you have to just use caution. But those tests were done, um, like I said, by... Uh, these tiny little mice and they gave extreme amounts at one time. So when you get your essential, uh, your CBD oil, um, you wanna shake it really well. You want to keep it out of heat and light. You wanna put, keep it, I keep mine in the refrigerator. And it's going to tell you now that you use it for topical application. So when they first launched it in 2019, I think it was in July, Lisa and I both were at convention when they launched, um, Nature's Ultra had their CBD. I'm telling you that booth was packed out. <laughs> and when it first launched, then they did, some of those bottles did have that you could take it um, underneath your tongue. You could take it orally. Your bottles do not have that now. Okay. Um, and then I get that asked a lot. Have they changed it up? Is it not okay? Not safe. What I would say to you is this. If you've used essential oils, you've heard this before. When Young Living had their labels, and remember, I'm going to use lemon here. We got lemon, and I have a lemon vitality oil, okay? You see the two different labels there. This is the same oil, but FDA came to Young Living, and they said, you know what? You can't tell people they can take this internally without creating a separate label, and this one's white. You see that right there, and it says vitality. Well, this is the same oil, what is in the CBD bottle. Same oil as it first was. The only difference is that at this level, they have not created two different bottles with two different labels. It just really isn't economical. We're talking about three liquid bottles here. And so they just, you know, let you know, use your own judgment, but you are going to see on that label to follow the FDA guidelines that you are going to see where it says to apply it topically, which you can apply it topically. Um, just like anything else, I'm going to tell you to start out slow. Just use a little bit, a dropper full. I think they have one dropper full is like the average dose, but take about half of that or a fourth of that. I would say though, if you are going to um, use CBD, um, I would say make sure that you use it consistently because guys, just like using your essential oils, you want to use it every single day or you want to be consistent with it because if you're not, um, if you don't work the oils, the oils will not work for you. You don't have that success um, story. But if you use this every day, use it for 30 days um, before you come to a conclusion of whether you feel like it worked or it didn't work. So I'm going to go through some of the um, products that, that they have, um, that, and then we'll talk about the starter kit that they have. But um, 
this, the, calm, the, the, the first two that I'm going to talk about is probably my favorite two. One is being the calm roll on. I love the calm roll on. I use it a lot. Um, it comes in a 300 milligram, 600 milligram. It has eucalyptus in it, frankincense, ylang ylang, orange, all the good stuff. Um, lavender, so much goodness is in that. Um, it creates a peaceful environment. You can actually feel that little calming and anxiety because remember, you have come, you have completely combined essential oils, the terpenes from essential oils, not only is terpenes what gives us that great aromatic scent, but also those oils and their terpenes have the positive effects on our body. And we know what that does. But when you combine it with CBD, it really is powerful in the in the body to support the body in a way where, remember where we talked about it basically um, goes to the CB1 and CB2 receptors through another receptor um, that it is a G protein that is actually making those two receptors communicate. And therefore, when that happens, then it has the ability to bring the body to homeostasis. So that's the goal. So if you have inflammation in the body, if you're not getting a peaceful night's sleep, if you are battling something, then this helps bring it to homeostasis. And when you combine it with the oils, it is very powerful. And it just, it is just very, um, takes it to the magnitude level, like um, really, really great support for the body. Can't be broken. This is probably the favorite to me, um, I have the success story with the muscle bomb, um, 300, 600 milligrams, um, of course, just what it is. It targets sore, achy mu muscles. If you've worked out and you haven't worked out in a long time and then you work out, you, this will be your best friend. Sues any kind of um, strains or anything like that that you have on your muscle. Um, a couple of years ago, guys, I fell and I tore my knee and it was really a bad um uh, it had a long time to scar because it really tore the flesh. And so I used the essential oils to not only heal that, but even after my, my knee, the flesh wound had healed up, I was having a lot of, it would swell and it would periodically just have a lot of pain. I couldn't hardly walk on it and it would just come and go. It wasn't anything. So I thought, oh my gosh, I've gotten some maybe some inflammation in there, probably a little bit of arthritis is in there. I'm not really sure, but it would just kind of come and go. When we went to convention and I got my kit and I brought it home, I started using the muscle balm on my knee faithfully every single day. And after I would say about two months, um, I could definitely tell a difference um, in my knee and that knee pain fluctuating and supporting that. And actually, y'all, after about two months, I don't have to use it every single day now. And I have not had that sporadic soreness and hurting in that knee since I've used that. So whatever was causing that, the muscle bomb and using it every single day worked itself out and brought it to a stable homeostasis in the knee. Um, so now I just use it for other things. It's just really something great to have on hand. I love it. All right, so let's talk about the oils, the CBD oils. So there's cinnamon, there's citrus fresh, and there's mint. I get asked a lot, what is the difference between the three? Cinnamon has cinnamon bark in it. We all know the benefits to cinnamon bark, but I would say the oils that they all chose, um, they all boost your activity, the boost your mood, boost your activity, energizes all the things. And they all have a little bit of similar, like, you know, supports the, uh, you know, if you have inflammation in the body, if you have anxiety, all the things, all three of these really pretty much do the same thing. There's not a whole lot of difference, but if you are one that is, um, you know, playing around with taking it um, orally as some have, that's your choice, then um, it might be based more on flavor than anything else. And then of course you have citrus fresh CBD, you get 500 uh, milligrams or a thousand, all of the oils come in a 500 milligram or a thousand milligram. Um, and the citrus one is infused with grapefruit and orange. Of course, that's energizing. I always say 
you know, um, the other great thing about CBD alone <clears throat> is uh, the boost of metabolism. So if you're someone that's trying to lose weight, um, CBD is an excellent source to help support that idea. And if it were me, the citrus one is a really, really great one for that because grapefruit and orange are great additives to help you with that, not only to help curb your appetite, but also boost your metabolism as well. So that one's a really great one. And actually that's the one that comes in your kits. And then Cool Mint is 500 milligrams, a thousand, and it's infused with peppermint and spearmint. And also it's an uplifting blend that will support you throughout the day as well. All right, CBD starter kits, guys. You've got two options here. You've got your regular strength. They both of these kits come with the exact same products, just the strength changes. So you get a Calm CBD, 300 milligram, a Muscle Rub for 300 milligram, and the Citrus Oil for 500 milligram. That is your regular strength for 165. Your extra strength is the 250, and it's going to have the Calm 600, the CBD Muscle 600, and the Citrus Fresh um, the citrus oil for a thousand. So that's the only difference between the two is you're getting the higher milligrams in the extra strength. You don't get more. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing. Here we go. <laughs> All right, guys. So um, I want to see if you have any questions. I wanted to try to run through this a little bit um, quicker than I did on the gut on class because I did want to leave room because of most of the time people have a little bit of questions. So just to kind of rally this in just a little bit, um, I, I want you to remember um, just like with the oils, there's all these different kinds of information out there, but I get asked, can I take it while I'm pregnant? Well, I can't specifically give you advice on that because I'm not a, your medical doctor and I'm going to tell you that most are going to say, check with your doctor before you do anything like that. But you also have to remember that in other countries where this was not tabooed forever, um, there are people that have taken this in so many different forms, um, no problem. So I would say be your own, um, you know, warrior for yourself and just really think it out and think about what is best for you. There is, however, if you go to research CBD for children, you're probably not going to find a whole lot of negative. Um, if there's any kind of the, the pregnancy um, debate, uh, because does it pass into the embryo and into the placenta and all this good stuff, and what's the effect, there's nothing known as far as something um, warning there, but out of precaution, so that's why I say check with your doctor and do what's right for you. But when it comes to children, there's actually lots and lots and lots of good supported resources and material out there that says in children that CBD is an excellent source. ADD um, issues, excellent sources of support there. Um, so, um, and remember how this all got started where they kind of transitioned the legality of it was because the pharmaceutical company had done all this research to show the positive effects of CBD for someone that has seizures. Um, so there's so much out there that's really, really good. And the reason that it's so important um, to understand how it is effective in your body. I mean, now you can find CBD gummies, you can find CBD lattes, you can find CBD suckers, you can find CBD anything. The difference being, remember how I talked about the practice of how it's cultivated does make a difference because those random tests that they did had metals in them had lead in them. So you don't want to, someone that's going and getting a CBD that's like $20, um, yes, are they going to have a, a, a positive effect from it? Probably because it has CBD in it. So if they've been battling um, you know, nausea or something like that, they're probably going to say, oh my gosh, it helped me so much. It probably did because it had CBD in it. The problem with that, not knowing your source and where the company is getting it from, the problem with that is if it has metals and toxins and solvents and chemical compounds in it that's not good, you have just, you've got this vicious cycle. They're never going to get into balance because they're putting back in the body probably what helped them to be out of balance to start with. 
And the CBD is calming that feeling down and give them the resolution of support, but they're also putting back in the bad. So they're constantly out of balance and they're never brought to homeostasis. So that's the danger of using some of these CBD oils that you don't know where they come from. And fortunately for us with Young Living, like everything else that they have to offer us, we have the security of knowing that they are rigorously tested. They do the seed to seal testing. They go the extra mile and they do the COT extraction when it comes to the CBD oil to make sure that they are providing you with pure grade, pure quality, zero THC. So if anyone is wanting to know, you will not, you will not have a drug testing come back positive from using the CBD oils from Nature's Ultra and Young Living. So, all right, uh, Lisa, I'm going to open it up. And if anybody has questions, 